Today's review is going to be Saga of the Shadow Lords, which is expert module number 11. Made in 1986 and written by Stephen Bourne, he is also known for writing N3 Destiny of the Kings, X13 Crown of Ancient Glory, and multiple role aids for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. The adventure itself is designed for 4 to 8 characters of levels 5 through 9, and sort of consists of a hex crawl across a large map. The gist of the adventure is that a magical crystal has been stolen from a kingdom, and with its loss, the kingdom has gone into decay and is currently falling apart, and they need your adventurers to retrieve it and return peace and harmony back to the world. The adventure starts off with your characters being approached by some sort of envoy or messenger from an empire or kingdom that your party is familiar with. Now, in the module itself, it uses a messenger from the Empire of Theatis, which your characters should have been familiar with, in the campaign World of Mystara. However, I'm going to try and keep this description as generic as possible, because not everybody plays in Mystara. Now, about 30 years ago, a small realm or kingdom called Wendar was attacked by the Shadow Lord who resides in the land of Denegoth. Now, in this battle, Wendar was about to lose until the kingdom of Wendar had retrieved a magical crystal called the Elven Star, which helped them push back the evil forces of Denegoth and send them back to the sort of like plateau they live on. Uh, Denegoth actually is this land that that's on a plateau that's 6,000 feet above the Valley of Wendar. Now, this plateau is also completely surrounded by mountains. Think Lord of the Rings, the land of Mordor, except with less volcanoes, but just as many mountains around it, and not so much a giant tower with a flaming skull on top of it, or flaming eye. Now, the Shadow Lord is not exactly happy with this turn of events, and in the 30 years since then, he's been planning his return. The Shadow Lord has actually snuck a sort of like spy slash thief into the kingdom of Wendar, who actually became one of the trusted advisors of the king there. And that individual actually snuck off with the Elven Star. And with the Elven Star lost, the kingdom of Wendar began to decline. This decline was expedited by the fact that while the Elven Star was gone, a drought had actually hit the realm, which caused all of its crops to decay. And then the reserve water supply was depleted. The population, undernourished and short on water, suddenly became a little bit less civil, and there has been cases of civil disorder within the realm. Cases of murder, banditry, and desperation are now widespread throughout it. Now, the king of Wendar has requested help from its nearby ally, which should be either A, Thyatia, if you're running this in Mistar, or B, any sort of kingdom or empire that your adventurers are connected to. Now, the kingdom or empire that is contacted or Thyatia in this case, will decide that it's not really worth sending their army into uh, this small kingdom to fix their problems because they got bigger stuff to deal with. So instead, they find it will be a cheaper alternative to hire adventurers to deal with it. And thus, they send a messenger to find a certain group of trustworthy adventurers, your party, who they can offer a large sum of gold to the effect of 5,000 gold pieces per character, which can be brought up to 7,000 gold pieces if they, you know, barter a little bit, and send them into the kingdom to deal with the issue. The players either accept, in which case this adventure goes on, or they decline, in which case this adventure ends, and that's it. Upon their acceptance, chapter one of this adventure begins. The players are introduced to the city of Wendar, where it's pretty much... You the DM, or you, have to describe it in a way that makes it so it seems it's obviously gloomy. There's beggars on the streets, multiple empty buildings, kids clutching at, like, their mother's clothes, begging for food, that sort of stuff, you know, the odor of decay in the air. <clears throat> and as they make their way through the city, if the players decide to ask for assistance in figuring out where the heck they're supposed to go, someone will kindly point them in the direction of a nearby guard patrol. The guard patrol has been told by the king of Wendar to bring all adventurers to the citadel of Wendar. The guards will promptly take them to the citadel after, you know, they should probably make sure they're not evil or something. It depends on how you want to run it. Where then they will meet the wizard king 
of Wendar named Gilarum. Gilarin? Lord Gilarin? Whatever, it's spelled G-Y-L-H-A-R-E-N. And he's the ruler of Wendar, also referred to as the Wizard King. Now, once they meet him, the Wizard King uh, will introduce himself to the party and tell them the story of the land, advising them that many years ago the armies of Wendar faced off against the evil invaders of Denegoth. Now, they were on the verge of defeat when he approached his sage and asked him for assistance. And this sage went and obtained the Elven Star, which helped save the kingdom. It says in, like, the paragraph after this little narrative box that the Wizard King will not be quite open about how the Elven Star works or about a guy named Bensarian. Now, Bensarian is actually the sage I had just mentioned. However, the box text somehow missed, you know, mentioning his name. So if this is your first time reading through the box text and you haven't read the rest of the module, that's who Bensarian is. So anyways, the king goes on to tell you that the armies of Denegoth appear to be amassing on the other side and they don't know what to do. They need you to retrieve the Elven Star and also figure out what exactly is going on past the Mangle Mountains. The king will offer assistance in that he has a spy on the other side of the Mangle Mountains who has information to give them, which will point them in the way of the Elven Star and also how to get past the enemy armies on the other side. To figure out who the spy is, the king offers a like catchphrase that the player characters are supposed to use while speaking to people over there, and if they respond back with the correct phrase, that is the man who is the spy for Wendar. And off the adventurers go off into the mountain pass to try and get past the Mangle Mountains to find the spy. The first part. There are three set encounters on the road to just get to the mountains that, are, that the player characters pretty much have to run into. The first one is going to be a group of horsemen they run into that are wearing the colors of Wendar. They will appear to be soldiers of the kingdom and they will talk to the players they'll actually be you know interactive and act like normal soldiers ask them what they're doing and what their process is and what exactly is their plan for getting past the mountains unbeknownst to the player characters these are actually denegothan dark lancers who have slaughtered the actual squad of soldiers that's supposed to be on this road they will find this out in the second encounter, in which case they will ride upon a scorched battlefield where they will find multiple dead bodies of Windaran soldiers and a few dead bodies of soldiers who aren't wearing any colors at all because the Denegothans have removed the colors from them. However, if the player characters are careful enough, they will find that one is still wearing a medallion which connects them to Denegoth. The third set encounter is a group of brigands who are like Dark Lancer deserters. And if they defeat them, and there is an if there, because there's 20 of them, and they will begin the attack by ambushing them with arrows. At least 20 of them will ambush them with arrows, and then proceed to attack from there. This happens if the player characters aren't careful. If they defeat these guys and uh, capture some of them, the individuals will actually inform the player characters that they have some spare uniforms of Darkling answers that they could use to sneak their way past... Uh, you know, enemy soldiers and well, pretty much pretend to be Denegoth soldiers so they can have free reign of walking around the land. This only happens, obviously, if they capture any of them and don't, like, slaughter every single person. The next encounter, the fourth one, is actually where the player characters sort of have a choice in where the adventure goes. Sort of like uh, your first choose-your-own-adventure path. You have a path to the left... That leads to a cloud giant's castle, and a path to the right or forward that leads to the protector of the pass. Should the players decide to go forward, they will run into a black dragon that will attack them if it's obvious, or kind of like shadow them and change his appearance to spy on the player characters trying to figure out what exactly their plan is. This black dragon will actually use ESP to figure out the actual intentions of the player characters, you know, like in the back of their heads, so they can't exactly hide what their intentions are. So pretty much if the player characters go forward, they're going to have to deal with the Black Dragon. 
in some form or fashion. Otherwise, there, it might end up poorly. There's, there's a pretty high chance of it ending poorly. Should the player characters turn left instead, they will head towards the castle of the Cloud Giant. This Cloud Giant does not like Denegoth soldiers, so if the player characters are wearing the uniforms of Dark Lancers, he will proceed to attack them from a distance. However, if they do not wear the uniforms of the Dark Lancers, or announce what their actual plan is, this Cloud Giant will actually assist them and send them around the Black Dragon and into the village with very little problems. Now, once they get past this little fork, they will make their way to the village of Garan. Now, how much information the player characters get from this village depends on how inquisitive the players are. If they just go straight down the road and continue going towards the evil tower of the evil Shadow Lord, they will not get much assistance out of this town. However, if they dig in deep, they'll find little bits and pieces that will make this adventure a lot easier for them. For example, they can find the secret entrance to the keep of the Shadow Lord, which will be really useful once I get to that part. Uh, they will be able to make contact with a witch, will provide them with healing potions. They can even find the original traitor from the Kingdom of Wendor that stole the Elven Star in the village and kill them. The spy himself is this man named Sean, who lives on the, uh, like, outliers of the village and he's a trapper this guy even though he's a spy doesn't really have that much useful information for the player characters uh, the only information he really has is someone important has recently visited the village which is the traitor from Wendar there is an army camp a little bit further like north of the village and uh, the innkeeper's wife is a good source of gossip and the sheriff's hall currently holds a detachment of five to ten dark lancers the really useful piece of information it comes from this man called Leaper. Leaper used to be like a steward for the Dark Lord, or the Shadow Lord. And he actually has a map that describes where a secret tunnel is that leads underneath, um, like, well, it's a tunnel, so obviously it's underground. And it leads to the underneath of the castle of the Shadow Lord. Now, after they're done with here, their next big encounter is going to be the Denegoth camp. Now I want you to take a look at the map and observe how many bad guys are actually here. You're reading that map correct. There is 4,000 enemy soldiers in this camp. Now, the player characters don't have to interact with them if they are disguised correctly. However, if they aren't, their encounters will consist of either a small patrol of 40 orcs who will then attack them and surround them, or a group of 60 orcs which will at first glance think they belong there for some reason and they don't want to really bother with it because they don't want to get in trouble. If the player characters try and fight these guys, just let them die. There's no way any group of player characters, even if they're at 9th level, can defeat 4,000 enemy combatants. However, if they're disguised as Dark Lancers, they'll be able to get a decent amount of information from the soldiers in the camp who will see them as their compatriots. Most of the information they'll be able to gather from the soldiers will be in reference to the attack that's supposed to begin. Once they're done with the military camp, their next encounter area will be the Lothanar Forest. The Lothanar Forest is another one of those choose-your-own-adventure sort of paths going on here. The player characters can either A, go on all the way to the castle of the Shadow Lord if they wish, or they can make a couple side tracks. One of them is going to be to a like ruined woodland mansion where they'll find the remains of the elves who had tried to fight off Denegoth uh, before they took over the entire realm. Man, in this mansion they'll find a, like a diary that says that well, it references a magical weapon that can slay dragons. This weapon cannot be found here. However, the next optional encounter is with the dragon itself. And if you go to the dragon's cave, your player characters can actually trick this dragon if they're smart enough to figure out how to. Uh, but within this dragon's treasure is sort of like a, a scroll that once the player characters read the scroll, it will cause a sword to rise out of a nearby pond of water and this weapon is a plus one sword normally, or plus three versus any sort of dragon. 
The final chapter for the first half of the book is called The Tower of Gareth Minar. I am, once again, getting some weird vibes of Lord of the Rings from this for some reason. The tower actually has three levels, with the top level being the Shadow Lords. And there is also an additional sub-level, which is the dungeon. Because every evil tower requires a dungeon, obviously. If your player characters know of the secret tunnel, the player characters will actually come out in this dungeon and work their way up from there. However, if they don't know of the secret tunnel, instead they will have to make their way through the yellow mist that is surrounding the tower. The yellow mist is actually a gigantic sustained spell of cloud kill. This spell actually has a radius of 150 feet from the tower and extends up 80 feet. Any character of less than 5th level must save versus poison or die, and anybody that passes a save or is higher than 5th level will continue to take 1 hit point of damage for each round they are stuck in the cloud. And then once they get through the cloud, they will be at the front gate, which has armed guards at it. And then if this is the way the player characters decide to go, they get to have fun figuring out a way to get through that. Now once they make their way into the tower... There is a series of small traps that the player characters run into. Uh, a couple of illusionary dragons, which will mess with the mental capacities of the player characters should they fail to save against them. And then eventually they will make their way to face off against the Shadow Lord himself. The Shadow Lord is not alone in his chambers. He is also accompanied by his Hellhound, which is on the front cover of the book. The Shadow Lord himself is a 10th level magic user, and he's accompanied by a 7th level fighter who is the leader of like his troops, and a 7th level cleric. If the player characters weren't careful in getting up here, the Shadow Lord will know of their arrival and will have set up a series of illusions and spells of darkness to assist him in defeating the players. The players, once they open the door, will find a giant black dragon facing off against them, and any characters who had previously failed to save against the illusions earlier in the tower will have additional levels of disadvantage against them. The Elven Star is actually in this room too, however if the Shadow Lord is prepared for them, he has shrouded the Elven Star in a spell of darkness, making it extremely hard for the player characters to get a hold of it. However, if they do get a hold of it, or if they snuck their way in, they'll be able to use the powers of the Elven Star to assist them. And these powers are no joke. Every turn, or every round, the person holding the Elven Star can heal 200 PCs, even to the point of resurrecting them. Any illusions cast by the Shadow Lord or his henchmen in the room are immediately dispelled. The Shadow Lord's henchmen and pet must each make an immediate morale check. They flee if they fail. If they succeed, their morale levels for future checks are reduced by 2. Any PCs affected by the Dragon Sphere, which was where they failed to spell save earlier, that is cured immediately, and the cloud kill effect around the tower will immediately be dispelled. Using the Elven Star and all of his abilities, the player character should be able to defeat the Shadow Lord and all of his henchmen. When the Shadow Lord finally sees that his end is coming, he will actually use a stored wish spell and retreat back to his secondary sort of like fortress he has further in the realm of Denegoth. The Shadow Lord is supposed to survive no matter what, so the player characters can go on the second part of the adventure should they so decide. Once this battle has happened and the Shadow Lord has, you know, run away, the player characters can return triumphant to the city of Windar and present the Elven Star to the king, if they have the Elven Star. If they don't, then it will reinforce the need for them to go find the Shadow Lord again. The king, once seeing that the Shadow Lord has somehow survived, will request that the players go back into Denegoth and defeat him. Now, the evil armies of the Shadow Lord have dispersed with his defeat, and it shouldn't be too much of a problem for the player characters. However, once they go back into Denegoth, they will find that this Shadow Lord has changed his plans a little bit. He has instead become sort of like a Wraith Lord, and has begun commanding armies of the dead. The second part of the adventure is not as overtly dangerous as the first part of the adventure. You're not running into thousands of enemy soldiers. 
Instead, your player characters will be running into small groups of skeletons and gnolls as they fight their way to the Shadow Lord to defeat him once more. One of the necessary encounters that the players will have to do will be dealing with a gnoll camp. And this gnoll camp actually has a shrine to an evil god inside of it. And once they go to the shrine, defeat them, they'll be able to get a hold of this magical item called the Black Stick. The Black Stick is actually a rod of undead rulership, however it has a couple little things with it. It has the ability to either twice cast a sort of like resurrection spell which can return the dead back to life, or it can cast a destruction spell that can destroy any undead. The player characters will not know of these in the beginning, however a magic user has an 8% chance per week of figuring out that it has extra abilities beyond the Rod of Undead Rulership. Eventually they'll make the way to the Shadow Lord's new base, which is actually his old base that he had escaped from in the past, and they'll be able to face off against him. The Shadow Lord has become a 10 hit die Wraith Lord, and this Wraith can actually be destroyed using the, the Black Stick if the player characters have known the spell, otherwise they'll have to defeat him the old fashioned way. And with his defeat, the adventure is over. There's quite a few pages that extend on the history of the location and what the player characters discover can help them figure out more about the entire history of the Wraith Lord or the Shadow Lord and what has happened in the past with the realm of Denegoth. Now, I don't exactly find this adventure to be that bad. Uh, it actually appears to be pretty well thought out. As long as the players stick on the path. If they go outside the path or if they don't think, they're pretty much going to die. In rating the adventure itself, I will give the adventure a 4. This little sidetrack can actually last probably between 3 to 4 sessions for your player group. And it's all self-contained within the module. This would be a nice way to introduce a couple new realms if you wish to. You don't need to keep the names. You can reintroduce an old kingdom or empire from their past with the messenger from the beginning. It's pretty modular for a module. So yeah. 4 out of 5. For value, I will also give this one a 4 out of 5. You can actually get this printed on the DMs Guild for, at this time, under 9 US dollars. And an actual original copy for somewhere between 60 to 80 dollars at this current time on eBay. For Deadliness Factor, this is also going to rate a 4, so it's 4 down the line. It can be either A, extremely deadly if the player characters have no form of subterfuge at all, in which case they will just die, or they can sneak their way past almost every single encounter if they're careful, except for in the second part, in which case they have to face off against the undead who's not going to fall for their tricks. Altogether, this module is a 4 out of 5. I would highly suggest buying it just for nostalgic reasons, just to have in your collection, especially since you can get it for less than $9 currently on the DMs Guild. Well, I hope some of you guys found this useful, and uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.